Hello fellow producer, this is Ernesto and I'm here to help you finish better music. Today I'm going to show you how any beginner can start getting professional sounding vocals from one plugin. And that plugin is Nectar 3 Plus from Isotope. But I'll admit that when I first got Nectar 3 Plus, I was a little bit lost. Even though there were some really good manuals on it, I still was confused as a beginner how to get the most out of it. So in this video, I'm going to show you what I wish I would have known as a beginner. I'm going to show you step, step by step how a beginner can get the most out of Nectar 3 Plus. And as always, the links to this product will be in the description below. All right, cool. Let's get right into it. Before I start going through Nectar 3, I want to show you the vocal that I'm working with. A good friend of mine, Chris Kellogg, he sent over this vocal. He's a guitarist, but he wants to get into songwriting. And I was like, hey, like, just send me over a vocal. I'll demo it. I'll, I'll try to make it sound a whole lot better. All right, so keep in mind that my friend, he's not a vocalist. His recording setup wasn't ideal in any way, which is great because we're really good to see what Nectar 3 can really do. So let's take a look at this vocal. Cool. So he, I think he did a really good job. I love that, like the melody, um, but there's a lot of work to, to, to be done on this vocal. But yeah, I'm excited and let's jump into this. All right, step one. The cool thing with Nectar 3 Plus is that Isotope, they add in a couple of other plugins. So they add in RX Breath Control, which is amazing. And they also give you Melodyne Essentials, which is really good for uh, tuning your vocals. Okay, so step one is to get rid of all those breaths from the vocal take with RX-8 Breath Control. And RX-8 Breath Control is really easy to use. Let me load it up here. And this is honestly all I do. I just click the preset menu. I scroll down to Silent Breaths. And that's it. That's all I do to it. Um, this vocal take doesn't have a whole lot of breath issues. So I'm going to show you on this mic here what it does. So I have the same preset, same settings going on. And this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to just um, make sure you can hear it now. So I'm going to click this output breaths only. Cool. So you see how you can hear just my breaths. So with it on, I'm going to take a big inhale and you won't hear it. Yeah, so it's pretty crazy what we can do. So I'm just going to bounce it. So the processing is already baked in. Cool. So now I'll deactivate that. I'll just name this Chris Walker No Breaths to know where I'm at in the process. All right, step two. We are not opening up Nectar 3 yet. We're still not. Instead, we're going to open a Melodyne Essentials, which is bundled with Nectar 3 Plus, which is great. Um, and this is going to pretty much tune, pitch correct, the vocal take because it's really hard to sing in tune. Oh yeah, this is how it works. You open it up, click transfer, then you play the track. Your smoke, it burns in my cool, so Melodyne is recording this into Melodyne itself. And we'll be able to get it all pitch corrected. Boom, that's it. Uh, and you can tell that there are some parts where he's sharp or flat, like this is where he's flat, this is where he's sharp. You're seeing that his voice might waver a bit. Um, so let's fix that. So all you do, or this is all I do. Um, I mean, there's not a whole lot you can do in Essentials. You can do essentially the essential stuff in Essentials. Um, click this little button here, and it's gonna fix the pitch drift, which I like to increase a whole lot. So you can see in the graph there, we're fixing the drift and then pitch center. This is going to make things extra in tune. So you can really tell that when I'm at hundred percent, you're like, oh yeah, my friend wasn't uh, in key a whole, a whole lot, which is all good. So I'm gonna just keep it here. I'm not gonna go like completely perfect because that might sound weird. Um, so let's hear it now. Your smoke, it burns in my lungs and takes your time. Time. Yeah, sounds a lot better. That's great. And I will say in Nectar 3, there is a pitch correction module in there. Um, but I would say that Melodyne is a whole lot better than Nectar 3's pitch correction. The benefit of Nectar 3 is that you can do the pitch correction live. While in Melodyne, you can't do live pitch correction. It's mostly uh, for, you know, when you're producing and editing. Um, in your little in your little cave of, of, of wonders. So now what I'll do is I'm gonna bounce this once again. 
So now this is going to have, there will be no breaths and this is going to be in tune. So say Chris vocals in tune. All right. We can finally start to use Nitro 3 Plus for in step three, which is to apply vocal assistant. So let me get Nectar 3 on here first. All right, here's Nectar 3 Plus. It is finally open. We're on step three and we're barely stepping into this plugin. Uh, and as you can see, there's like a pitch correction module right here. I have it, the mix completely off. I don't need it because we already made that pitch correction with Melodyne. And step three, what I like to do is go to vocal assistant. And this is going to apply and correct and process your vocal. Click assist, go to next. And then now we select <clears throat> how we want Nectar 3 to listen to our vocal and process it. So you have three vibes to choose from. And if you hover over it, it'll give you an idea of what it's gonna sound like. So vintage can give you a darker and mid focus vocal sound. Modern will give you brighter, clearer vocal sound. And then dialogues that help you get more articulation and a balanced vocal sound. And then the intensity down here is just determining how much processing is gonna be applied to your vocal. So you can go light, moderate, or aggressive. So I, I was going to pick modern. We'll, we'll go here. We'll, we'll stick with modern. We're going to go moderate. Perfect. Then click next. And then all you do is hit play. You're and now Nectar 3 is going to be listening to that vocal and applying all these fun processes to it. All right. So it's done. I hit accept. And now let's hear a little before and after. I love clicking this match button because it's going to allow the before and after to have the same uh, volume. Uh, so you're not just comparing something really quiet, something really loud. So bypassed is how it sounds. Your smoke, it burns in my lungs. All right, then unbypassed. Your smoke, it burns in my lungs. All right, so it sounds a whole lot better already. That takes me to step four, which is to adjust the vocal assistant settings. But before I do that, I wanted to ask something. If you're new to Nectar 3 and you're finding this video to be really helpful and you're finding that you're going to be able to use this a whole lot better, then please let me know by liking this video. Seriously, when people like this video, it helps me know that what I'm making is useful for other producers out there. Okay, let's go to step four. Step four is to adjust the vocal assistant settings. So here are the settings that I like to adjust. One thing I like to adjust is in the gate here. If your vocal just has like some background noise or, or just something just dis really distracting, what I like to do is apply the gate and just set it so that the vocal is sitting above the gate and any noise is sitting below it. So I just like to do that really quick. Another thing I like to do is go to the EQ1 and what EQ1 is going to be focusing on are applying these nodes to any nasty resonances. So let's just uh, look at this one here, I like to solo it. Yeah, so just a little a little grossness right there. So all I want to do to make this even better is click this pop out dynamic frequency. So now this node is going to follow that resonant frequency as my friend sings. See how it's moving around? Let's check this one out. Yeah, you can hear the resonance more there. Cool. So I'll apply that there. We'll look at this one. Yeah, this is more so. See the difference? So this is without it. So you just have like this static EQ no, not really doing a whole lot, but when you add this frequency follow, it's less, it's not as extreme. What I also want to do is increase the Q, maybe dip it down a little bit more because I want it to be a bit more strong, but also surgical at the same time. And let's just check this one out as well. Yeah, that one's not bothering me. So let's hear it now. Smoke, it burns in my lungs. I probably went too much. And takes your time. All right. I move on uh, past the de -esser, and then I go to EQ2 now. And then with this, what I like to do, I used to like go crazy and adjust it and find tweak it and just like, ah, like make, try to make it better. But now I just like to <laughs> dip the, like the slider down. Oh, it burns in my lungs. 
and takes your time. Just finding a place in the mix, mix slider here to that I'm just like happy with. And then, oh, one other thing I like to do, this, this AILM button, it stands for auto level mode. That's what it stands for. I like to get rid of it. I find that when it's applied on there, um, it makes things sound like too compressed and there's not enough dynamics. The vocal doesn't sound as natural when this is engaged. So this is something I don't really use a whole lot of. Smoke it burns in my lungs. Versus. Smoke it burns in my lungs. Yeah, what that button is trying to do is just make sure that the vocal is hitting like the same uh, level, not like in a peak value, but more in like an average level. Smoke it burns in Anyways, I turn it off and move on from there. And then uh, I like to go to the compressor, see how much it's compressing. And takes your time. Let's go a little bit less on that. Time. And then drop this mix down. Cool. And uh, now let's go to our reverb. And what I like to do here is just add some pre delay so that we have um, a bit more articulation between the vocal versus the, re the reverb there. And then, yeah, the mix knob, I keep it super low. Smoke it burns in my lungs. Smoke it burns oh, in my some decay. lungs. And you know what? Let's add some delay in there to make it extra fun. So I'm going to link it. Uh, feedback, drop a lower. Uh, let's Smoke hear it. it burns in my lungs. Definitely drop the mix slider. And takes your time. Mm, cool. We'll keep it at that for now. The last thing I like to do is go to my width and just add some width to it so that things can start to feel a little bit more thick. More to mention. Alright, let's bypass it now. Smoke it burns in my lungs. Cool, I think it's sounding better. Let's add it back in our delay and our reverb. Let's hear it all in the context of this quick little loop that I whipped up. Smoke it burns in my lungs. Oh, let's, let's do it again. Your smoke it burns in my lungs. And takes your time. Time. All right, so under your next and final step, we're going to fix any masking issues that might be in our session here. Um, so what we get to do with Nectar 3, it automatically helps just remove that unmasking. It's really easy to do. But to do that, let me just set it up real quick. All I gotta do is go to my... Cool, I have my loop here. I'm gonna add in a relay, which comes with Nectar 3. But what this is able to do is communicate with Nectar 3 and they're going to work together to get rid of that masking. So just to achieve that, I have uh, cool. So I click vocal assistant again, but now I'm going to click unmask. I'll click off assist. So we just focus on the unmasking. So next I select my source. I say um, the song master relay. That's the only, um, what do you call it? Track that has relay on it. Click next and then play it again. So now it's analyzing both tracks and it's finding out where that problem frequency is. Cool. Click accept. All right. So now let's open up this little drop down in relay. <clears throat> All right. So saying that right here, see that dip by like what? Three, six, five Hertz, negative 6.4 decibels. That's quite a bit. So that's like a big chunk being taken out of it. So let's, let's hear what we're missing. So that's with the unmasking. All right, let's get rid of it. And you might think that that's a lot. Like I don't want that much to be taken out. So what we can do is uh, adjust the amount slider. I like to actually dial it back a little bit because sometimes it is a bit too much. Do a little before and after. This is before. Your smoke it burns in my lungs. And here's after. Yeah, I think what 
this unmasking does, it just allows, it's almost like we're getting the frequencies in that song layer and just having them step back, just kind of dip out a little bit and having the vocals just kind of taking a step forward. So now the vocals standing out more, which is typically what you want in the song. Okay, and that's all the steps. You know, let's just look back at the very beginning when we got this raw vocal. Your smoke, it burns in my lungs and takes your time. All right, now let's hear the after with all of our delay, reverb, everything, all the processing. Your smoke, it burns in my lungs and takes your time. Yeah, sounds a whole lot better. Nice, and that's pretty much it. So if you're a beginner or you're new to Nectar 3 Plus, um, I would try this out. And I think it's an easy and a just approachable way that'll help you feel proud and confident in your vocals. All right, before I end this video, I wanted to give a producer pep talk to um, any producers who are starting off. I just wanted to tell you this. I, I, I recently broke a thousand subscribers on YouTube. It's, it, was a, it was a really great moment. But this is the thing, it took over eight months of hard work every single week, talking about all these different plugins and I barely hit a thousand subscribers. And that's okay. I think when you start off in anything that's like a big, you know, journey, I think there's a lot of effort is needed to reach that first milestone. I think that's just the way things work. So as you start writing your first songs, as you start working with vocalists, processing them, comping them all together, I hope that you allow yourself to not get it right the first time or the second time or the third time or fourth time. And that's okay. You're supposed to mess up because you're a beginner. You don't know anything yet. And I think after you, you learn from all your thousands of, of mistakes, you start to get good. And that's a good feeling. And pretty soon you'll reach your first milestone and I hope that you celebrate. Celebrate big over a small milestone. Do it. And uh, yeah, that's it. I hope that this video was helpful to you. If you want to learn more about plugins that are great for beginners, um, click one of the videos here. And I hope that um, we can hang out again. Please consider subscribing. We're going to see you in the future. Later.